Welcome to the seventh grade classroom. Uh, I'm Mr. Rivellino. Today I'd like to take you through the safe setup on operation of the drill press. Uh, this tool is going to allow us to drill holes into parts vertically. We can also adjust that table to do other things. So as other machines in this classroom, I want to make sure I'm taking care of myself in terms of safety. I'm going to wear my safety glasses at all times. I'm going to clear myself from my fingertips all the way to my elbows. I want to make sure that I'm clear, both hands. I want to have closed toed shoes on, make sure nothing gets inside of my toes. Uh, if I had long hair that touched my shoulders, I'd make sure to tie that back as well. Um, any necklaces, hoodie strings, things of that nature, I want to tuck those in because I don't want anything to get caught into the rotating parts of this machine. So this drill press here is designed to be able to allow you to move this table up and down and vertically control your movements. You can put larger parts, smaller parts in there. We can change out the drill bit to larger and smaller. And we can use this handle on the right hand side to lower and raise that drill bit. Up front, we've got our on-off switch, so when we power that on, the drill bit will begin spinning, and we'll lower that or shut that down. This machine also has a safety guard that can be used to protect you. For purposes of this demo, I'm going to keep the safety guard out of the way so you can view what's going on. And then um, I'm going to begin with trying to make a hole through the center of this part so I can use uh, or make a cut on the scroll saw. So I'll begin by trying to change out the drill bit. I keep my drill bit key stored up top. I'm going to pop that key in, the teeth are going to align and bite, give that a twist left to loosen, and the drill bit will pull out. I'm going to grab a drill bit that will fit it into this space and allow me to get my scroll saw into there, so I think that size should work well. And then just adjust that tight by hand. Again, take my key, insert it into the chuck, and twist right to tight. Remove my key and set that up where it's safe. And then I have to manipulate the table to adjust it to a good height. There's a lock in the back corner here. I'll unlock it, raise it up to a good set position. And then I want to clamp this part so it won't move as I'm drilling. The very best way to hold down a part with some clamps. I find the very best way is to use two. Set this part with two clamps. Once I've got that set up and the hole looks like it's where I want it to go, I lower my guard. And again, for this demo, I'll leave the guard up out of the way so you can see the operation. Power on the switch, the machine will get up to full speed. And then I'll carefully lower that drill bit down into the part. You can watch the chips fly as you make that hole cut. As you approach the bottom of your part, you want to be gentle so you don't, blow, don't have what they call blow out and the back of the wood will plop out. Pull that back and you're all set. Once the machine is stopped, it's safe to remove the clamps and clear your part. So that's prepared for my scroll saw. Welcome again to our 7th grade classroom lesson on how to operate a scroll saw. Today we're going to talk about the use of the scroll saw and its safety. Let's start talking safety. Uh, anytime I operate the scroll saw, I always make sure I have my safety glasses on. From fingertip all the way to my elbow, I want to make sure I'm clear. Any necklaces, jewelry, long hair is going to be tied back if it touches my shoulders. Um, I want to make sure I have closed toed shoes in case anything drops down through there. Um, like other machines, I'm always going to make sure I maintain a safe distance away from the saw blade. Um, I like to keep my fingers three inches away from all moving parts in any of my machines in the shop. And for right now, I'd like to talk about what this scroll saw is really useful for. Um, I'm trying to make an outside curve that I could probably cut on the bandsaw, but I also want to make an inside curve, which I could not. With a bandsaw, I'd have to cut through the outside of this part, and I don't want to have it cut through. So I've drilled a hole. I'm going to take the blade apart, put it in there, and then cut out the inside features. That's something special this scroll saw can do. It also has a very small blade allowing me to make super small twists and turns. So I'll give you a quick sample of what that would look like if I were to try to make a super small turn on the scroll saw. Not something I could accomplish on the bandsaw. This machine has already been set up for the operation that I'm about to perform. I'll reach down, power that on, and you can notice the scroll saw moves up and down. And I can control the speed on the knob up in the front. I'll get, get, get that going up to full speed. Take my part, place it in against there. Now when I place the part against the scroll saw, because of the way that blade moves, the blade moving up and down wants to make the part move up and down. So you'll notice that you have a part here that is also a safety guard 
and also helps hold the part down. So I'll power that back on once again. When I place that against that saw blade, it wants to vibrate. And I can twist that part, as I said, on a very small curve. I need to be careful. That saw blade is small, so it's easy to break it. I want to take my time on my cut, especially at the end, that little piece will pop out and my saw blade will become exposed. Capable of cutting out really small, intricate turns with this machine. So now I'd like to try to cut the inside features, which requires me to take the scroll saw apart to make that happen. Now the blade is set with a pin on the top. In the very back of the machine, there's a knob that I can loosen. Once that's become loose, I can push down on the top and the front of the saw blade and pull that pin right out of the machine. Releases the blade, and I'm going to raise the holder down, or roll the holder up, excuse me, and insert the blade right inside of the hole where I'm trying to make my cut. Now this saw is unique because it allows me to take it apart, put it back together, and the pin will lock all the way into the back. Once that's set, I'm going to reach to the back of the scroll saw. I like to twist it until I can feel it stop and then give it three big twists. And that'll tighten that blade so I know it's sharp, set, and ready to go. Again, to keep this part from bouncing around, I'm going to lower the holder down and lock it into place. This is going to operate much like working from the outside, but now I can work from the inside, make my cut, and take it out when I'm done. Put the machine up to full speed, I can begin my cut. I like to cut really close to my lines, reduce the amount of sanding work I have to do. The entire time I'm using two hands to hold this part down on the table. Now when you come to a sharp turn in a corner, you can either back up from your turn or you can make a sharp turn. In this case here, I'm going to back all the way up and go from a different angle. To make a straight cut with this machine, it's much like the bandsaw. You just got to take your time, guide the machine straight, and when you get to the corner, the piece will break out. With a loose part inside, I like to release, remove that part. You can push that out, and then turn to continue. As I get close to the corners, I tend to slow down, blow that extra dust out of there so I can see really well. And again, I'll back up and come in from a different angle. This machine is unique because you can back up without fear of the blade breaking or pulling off of the wheel. Once I'm done, I'll release the blade in the back, allowing me to push down on the front and release the, the blade from the holder. And I have a completed cut.